It's green for go. They're racing. He says go. He says Tara. And Tiger Tara rolls away from them on the home turn. Here comes another big boil over. Equine athleticism at its best. The king is in the castle once more. This is in one race. The rest are almost in another post. She is a star with a capital S. It's going to be a triple treat. A miracle three-peat. Ladies and gentlemen, you have witnessed history here at Menangle. What about that? It's getting right up on the sprint lane and it's going to bolt in. Hello and welcome to the Sprint Lane podcast for Harness Racing New South Wales. This is episode 92 and it's great to have your company today. My name's Greg Hayes and this is the Sunday session. For the next half hour or so, I'm going to talk harness racing in New South Wales. So whether you're going for a walk or you're at the gym or you're doing a jog trip, Sitting at home, relaxing, wherever you are, I hope you're enjoying the podcast today. Who's on this week? Well, I thought it was time to catch up with Ashley DeLoza on the podcast, especially after she drove four winners at Newcastle on Friday night. I know I spoke with another young driver, Lucas Rando, after he had a night out at Newcastle going back just over a month, and it's amazing to see these new names going so well. Obviously, Ash has been around a few years, and so too has Lucas. Now, I left Sky Racing in May 2019, so... It's more than five years ago, and names like Rando and Deloza weren't up in lights like they are now. I'm really enjoying the chance to chat to these participants, get to know them, find out their story, and I'll do that with Ash today. I was speaking with Ricky Alchin on the podcast a couple of weeks ago when Ash drove her first Metro winner at Menangle, and Ricky was thrilled for Ash on that occasion. So I'm looking forward to speaking with Ash Deloza on the podcast. Uh, What about the form of Will Rickson? He just continues to drive winner after winner. Has already racked up more than 60 winners this year, should crack another 100 for the year. Menangle on Saturday night, he drove two winners, one for Brad Hewitt and one for Leon Jurd. He drove Captain's Knock, an absolute treat, after dropping him into the 1-1 from the wide draw and then just outthought everyone with Lockheel when he gunned out, led and then proved too strong. Very interesting to see what plays out with Brad Hewitt in the Eureka. He's got Captain's Knock in the race, but he drives Extreme C for his dad. it be interesting to see whether he drives Captain's Knock or whether he tries to push to drive Extreme C. I haven't heard anything. I'm just throwing out the thought bubbles. If I was a driver, I know which one I would want to be steering. It's the horse that's sitting at home in the stables this weekend. That's not a shot at Captain's Knock by any means. He's a very good horse. His win at Menangle on Saturday night proved he had a few strings to his bow. So he's got that versatility. He's got that strength. And it's going to make him a serious contender in the world's richest harness race. Swayze was back at the races on Saturday night, proved too good for his rivals again. In fact, it was a good night for the Grimson Stable with both Swayze and Artie's Express winning. Uh, The driver on Swayze was Cam Hart. Jack Trainer drove Artie's Express and Jack Callaghan drove Royal Dan, who was beaten as a shorty later in the night. Grimson does look to be using a lot of drivers at the moment. Most often, Jack Callaghan is getting the call up and Cam Hart does look to have fallen down the pecking order. Plenty of stories going around the industry, why this may have happened, but I'm not into fanning rumours, never have, never will. I like to promote the sport of harness racing, and that is what this podcast is all about. So I'm looking forward to catching up with both Ash and Will later on. The Menangle Express is back where I'll have a look at the eight races run at headquarters and see if we can find a winner or two going forward. Plus, Mr. T will have another couple of tips. We both missed out last week, so both looking to get back into the winner's list this week. But time to get this podcast going. And first up, I'm going to speak with Ash DeLoza. Double lines is on the inside, being tapped along. Trying to pick it up is Flying Shard. Coming now with a big burst of speed is Cologne to the outside of the track. And the widest runner will be Muckin Diva. Turning for home there right across the track. Double lines with the narrow lead. Coming up swiftly is Cologne. To the outside of the track is Muckin Diva. Coming quickly right over the top. Cologne and Muckin Diva. It's Muckin Diva coming over the top. And four winners for Ashley tonight. Well, Ash DeLoza absolutely slayed them at Newcastle. Castle on Friday night with four winners. She won races three, four, five, and six. She had a couple of drives at Manangle tonight, and she's got drives at Bankstown on Monday, Manangle on Tuesday, and interestingly enough, drives for all different stables, people taking advantage of that five-point claim, and of course, driving in great form is Ash Deloza. She's joining me to have a chat. Hi, Ash. How are you? Hi, Greg. Uh, yeah, I'm good, thank you. Congratulations with the four wins on Friday night at Newcastle. Yeah, thank you. It was, um, it was a great night, that's for sure. Is it a career best, the four winners? 
Uh, yeah, I've only ever driven a double, so yeah. Okay, so it was uh, clearly uh, by far and away your best night at the office. Let's have a chat about those uh, four winners. You only went there for the four drives. You drove way out west in race three for David Caffin. You had to be pretty patient with this one. Yeah, I drove him the week before and um, he went really good. He won that week as well. He's a little fit sprinter, so I just had to drive him the same and um, worked out well when the leaders were under pressure. I thought um, just wait, wait as long as I could to go and um, no, he proved to be too strong. You've obviously got a pretty good association with the horse. Yeah, that was only my second time driving him for um, two wins. So, no, I hope I can keep it up. And what happens in situations like that? Are you like you're, you obviously had a, a number of drives for Ricky on, on Friday night, but if you get a, a phone call with, with a drive at, say, Newcastle or, um, say, Bathurst or something like that, will you make the trip? Is that how it works? Yeah, pretty much. I've been travelling a fair bit at the moment. I've been going to Bathurst nearly every week and Newcastle every Friday, so now I'm happy to travel where I have to. Race four, you drove forceful for uh, Ricky. Um, What did you make of forceful? Yeah, I thought um, obviously he was really well. We were going to try and get the lead, but when when they come out under me and we were never going to lead, I grabbed up early enough and um, got out of that early speed and ended up in the 1-1 and couldn't have worked out any better. Um, probably had to go a little bit earlier than I wanted, but he just felt so good and he um, no, he was really strong. It was um, it was a, a great piece of driving on Forceful to, to end up where you did. What about Van Basten? It, it looked to have a little bit on them in race number five and in the end they, they made you work a little bit harder, but uh, he still proved too strong. Yeah, for sure. He was definitely the best runner in that race by far, I thought, and... Um, Obviously, I had to do a lot of work, but I wasn't overly concerned as he's a pretty strong horse. And once they handed up the lead to me, um, yeah, it was definitely all over. Yeah, so that was the third. And then the fourth one was Muck and Bar Diva, who, again, had to work for it. Um, came from a long way back, but you timed your run to perfection. Yeah, she, um, it was her first start for Ricky, um, and he said she's really far, so we're always going to go back on her and come with one run. And I, I got a little worried just um, how wide I did have to come. But at the top of the straight, she really let down really well and um, proved that she was too fast. So in in a situation like that, do you uh, do you get panicky out there when, when things aren't going to plan and you're, you're worried that maybe, you know, you're not in the right position? Like, how do you – are you calm out there or do you, do you get a little bit uh, anxious? Um, I think I used to probably get a little bit anxious and whatever, but these last couple of months, I've, I think I've really improved and I've been pretty patient um, in my driving and I think that's really um, proved in my drives that I'm, I'm quite patient lately and I knew how fast she was and yeah, I had to come wide, but um, no, I think I was patient enough and yeah. Just having a look at, um, at your overall career, started driving in 2021, you drove three from 14 and then 16 from 86 in 2022, 20 from 158 in 2023 and this year it's been a breakout year for you, 255 drives for 47 wins so your strike rate is really, really good um, and obviously getting drives for plenty of stables so plenty of people wanting to use your, uh, your five point claim at the moment. Yeah, I've definitely improved each season and like I said, these last couple of months I've just really seemed to be getting the hang of the driving and um, picking up a lot more drives for outside trainers, which definitely helps and um, no, I've been travelling a fair bit, so um, no, it's been good. And what about, you got your first Metro winner as well a, a few weeks ago now, so everything seems to be falling into place for you. Yeah, these last couple of months have been really amazing. i I didn't think I'd be able to do any of this, to be honest, from where I come from. But um, no, to get my first Metro was amazing. And to get it on um, Rick, one of Ricky's horses who I work for was even better. Now, what's the Ash DeLosa story? How did you get involved in, in harness racing? Um, you know, I, I stepped away from the sport in about 2019 and you've obviously gone bang since then. So what's your what? how did you get involved? Um, yeah, well, Going back a few years now, I was living in Queensland and um, just started at Grant Dixon Stables and I was there for about three years. And I um, I never really thought about a future in the sport, but I, then I met my partner, Chris Geary, and um, we had two horses of our own and that just kind of made me get my trainer's license and 
I never really thought about driving either, but the more I was training them, the more I loved driving and, um, you know, I wanted to get out there. So it's just a love of horses from, from when you were really young? Yeah, I've always been involved in horses, like just riding horses from a young age. And um, I thought after school, I didn't really know what I wanted to do, but obviously I'd always loved horses. And I thought I um, would, wouldn't mind working with them one day and just seen an ad for harness racing. And I had no idea what harness racing was, but I thought I'd give it a go and haven't looked back since. So when you started driving, who were some of the, the big influences on you? Obviously, Chris would have would have been giving you a helping hand. Yeah, definitely Chris. He was definitely the main one. And um, also Ricky, uh, when I started working there, he um, helped me get my um, license. And um, yeah, definitely those two. And you still train. Um, so what do you think the future will hold? Do you prefer the driving now that you're starting to really hit your straps or, you know, do you still have that passion for training them? Um, I love both, to be honest. Like, obviously, um, when you've got your claim and you're going really good, at, um, it's, I love the driving side, but I also do love training and it's a good backup once you do lose that claim. If you're not, not out there driving as much, um, it's good to have that backup as a trainer and, I do love looking after the horses and working them, so I'm happy to um, be doing both. How many how many horses are you training at the moment? Um, Chris and I have about 11 in work, so it's not too many. Okay, but it's still a, a, a sizable team um, and, and obviously enough to keep you busy anyway. Yeah, for sure. It's um, definitely enough for us too anyway. So what? how did you celebrate your Friday night success of the four winners? Oh. Haven't um, celebrated yet. Just a bit of catching up on some sleep. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations with the four wins. That's a, that's a huge effort. Um, you're obviously moving in the right direction and you're going places. So I wish you all the best of luck and, and thanks for joining me tonight. Thanks, thanks, Greg. In the direction of the home corner, Hector Led being pushed along his I'm in trouble, waiting on a run surface, about to uh, peel his captain's knock. Stravinsky makes its move, but it'll have to go four deep, and Tuppence is trying to work into the clear 27-5 the quarter. They straighten up, and the leader was Hector. Inside run presents for surface, but captain's knock quickly goes up to join the leaders. Running home is Stravinsky, Tuppence behind them. Captain's knocks the leader. Stravinsky's trying its heart out in second spot. Back to the insiders tuppence the leader is captain's knock over stravinsky and too good for them captain's knock welcome back he is one of the form drivers in new south wales at the moment and another two winners at menangle on saturday night uh will rickson is doing a, a great job at the moment he's joining me to have a chat congratulations will another good night at menangle yeah thanks greg thanks for having me on it's uh yeah it definitely was a good night so um yeah, very fortunate. Mate, you are driving in good form at the moment. Um, I don't think I'm speaking out of school. I was out at Penrith a, a week and a half ago. I was having a chat to Fred Hastings, and he reckons you're the, you're the form driver of Sydney. What do you put it down to at the moment? Just the horses mainly, Greg. Like, um, you know, getting on the, the good horses for the good stables is, you know, such an important thing. And, yeah, I've just got a lot of good trainers backing me and, you know, lucky enough to get on the right horses. And um, yeah, things are just working out quite well. So um, hopefully they can they can keep going, mate. Uh, 160 winners in 2023. You're 63. We're not halfway through the year, so you're well and truly on course to get over the hundred again. Is that is that now a, a you know a goal you set yourself of getting to the hundred winners in a season? Yeah, I think so. I think for um, obviously to to get 100 winners is a big thrill, and it's you know quite a good effort. So. Last year was a you know a massive thrill for me. So if I can get you know over the hundred and continue to get good drives, I'll be yeah more than happy with that. Well, you opened up proceedings on Saturday night with Captain's Knock driving this one for Brad Hewitt, and uh, well, a um, little bit of interference at the start between No Heartthrob and Jillaby Nitro, but um, as a result, you were able to slot into a pretty good spot. Yeah, it was. Looks a little bit of a tricky draw with speed inside him, but um, Brad was really happy with the horse, so I just uh, we elected to, to sort of buzz out the first sort of fifty to hundred and then work it out from there. And um, yeah, just seen the obviously a couple got checked and just seen that 
a spot available to, to slot in. So um, we took that and, yeah, it gave me a, such a good feel throughout the race. So, to be honest, I just never thought I was getting beat after 100 metres. It just travelled so well. And, um, yeah, I think he still had a little bit left. So, yeah, beautiful horse. At the top of the straight, um, Stravinsky, Seaton Grimer came um, came out three wide. You sort of had to come out underneath him. Um, but Captain's knock, he, he just looked to have another gear there if you'd really wanted it. Yeah, I think so. I, um, obviously, roused on him a little bit, but I, I sort of didn't, um, you know, get up him too much. I could feel him holding Stravinsky at bay quite comfortably. He was pricking his ears and all of that near the line. But, yeah, obviously, still had the plugs in and, I was still quite kind to him up the straight, so it was a probably an ideal first up run for him. When the you know looking like it's going to be a pretty busy preparation for him, so um, I'm sure Brad will be more than happy with how he went. Do you feel any pressure driving a horse like him? He's obviously got the Eureka later on in the year. Um, you know, Brad ha- has has driven the horse for for most of his career, and and then you get the call to drive him on, on Saturday night. Is it a is it a bit of pressure because of the of what the horse has got coming up? Uh, I'm sort of always been quite fortunate. I'm not one to really uh, think too much about that. I sort of just like to focus on the race. And um, Brad speaking to Brad today, you know, didn't really put too much pressure on me. He sort of just uh, left it up to me and um, said he was happy with the horse. So. You know, when they're like that, it makes the driver's job easier. And, you know, I think if you can go out there with a clear head, it makes a big difference in races. So I try not to think too much ahead of it. But um, obviously, you, you when you get the call up on them sort of horses, you you want to, you wanna, you know, get the job done like you did the night. So yeah. it was, um, yeah, it was a good thrill. Mate, what about race two? You drove Vinky B for Trevor Monday. What did you make of Vinky B? Yeah, not too bad of a run. He didn't get beat far, but... Um, he travelled like he was sort of going to come into the race at probably the 300, but he just didn't maybe find the line as good as we would have liked. But, you know, they're on a quick mile, and Trev Monday said that he sort of raced three weeks in a row and had a couple of hard runs. So uh, might have just told him he might, he might miss him next week and um, freshen him up a bit. And, yeah, he's got a Saturday night win in him over the winter, I feel. Uh, dance and deliver for dad in race number three this horse won four starts ago you drove it a treat on that occasion um, and has been racing in, in pretty tough company really only beaten 12 metres on Saturday night you must have been happy with that performance yeah he went really good last week and run second to Van Basten and um, we're still happy enough with him tonight but I think maybe he just wasn't quite as sharp had a couple of sort of strong racings here at Van Angle so similar thing to Vinky B um, might miss him next week and freshen him up a bit. And yeah, he's been a horse that's done a really good job for mum and dad. So hopefully he can continue on that way. Seems to race well at Menangle. Race number four, you drove Lock Eel for Leon Jurd. Um, I think you outsmarted everyone here. You sh- showed that the horse has got gate speed. You got across, handed over to the leader, and you just got that really soft run. Yeah, it worked out well. It sort of lacked a little bit of form in the race. Um, you know, a few horses were out of form in it. So. Yeah, 2,300 metre racing's tricky and sometimes, you you know, you're better off chancing your arm and getting a closer spot because it can be hard to get the right track into it. So, yeah, luckily he's got tactical speed and could zip across and have the, the run of the race and um, he was able to get back into a bit of form tonight, which was good. What's it like driving for Leon? Does he give you instructions or does he just basically throw it over to you? Yeah, he's probably one of the easiest person, uh, people, sorry, that I've driven for. It's, um, he, you know, he puts his drivers on and I, you know, I think he's a bit of a believer that that's why he puts them on, that they shouldn't know what they, the best thing to do on the horse and, um, the leave, you know, leave it up to you. And I think as a driver, that's the best thing for you. If they leave it up to you, it's normally when you can drive your best races. So yeah, he's definitely a pleasure to, to drive for. And what about halfway down the straight? Were you pretty confident that you were going to get Tishan Raider? Yeah, he was, he dropped a bit, a little bit around the bend, and I was a little bit concerned, but that was probably the 27 flat third quarter. But um, as soon as the horse popped off my back, um, he thought I could sort of feel him kick up again and sort of want to hold it at bay. So, yeah, once we got halfway up the straight, I was confident he was going to hang on. Uh, in race six, that was the Artie's Express uh, Ladyship Stakes. You drove on Prezi Bell, who, again, didn't run a bad race. Um, obviously, up racing some of the best mares in the country in Artie's Express and Tay-Tay. Um, what did you make of I'm Prezi Bell's run? Yeah, more than pleased with her. She's just been one of the mares that have done such a great job for us. and um, 
she's um yeah she's just um you know always them mares are such quality mares but we don't feel as though she's that far behind them with the right run and she probably she's proved that a couple of times by qualifying for the ladyship so in the winter when these couple of good mares go up to Queensland um dad will probably elect to stay home with her and yeah I think she's got a nice featured mares you know, racing her over the winter, I, I hope. Yeah, uh, I'd, uh, I'd agree with you on that one. And Karaka Jack Tooth for Jared Alchin in the three-year-old Trotters Foundation final. Uh, finished second, but, uh, gee, it was a good run. Yeah, she's a lovely little filly. Jared's um, done a good job with her, and um, obviously the winner, Mildman's son, he's quite a nice horse, so, and he had a nice run, so it was always going to be hard to catch him. But, yeah, more than happy with her, her run tonight. She was, um, yeah, she gave me a really nice drive. Did did she, she she was a long way off them early? Um, what were you thinking at the top of the straight? Did you did you think you could get anywhere near them? Um, yeah, I could feel her winding her gears, um, and I could just see a couple of them were sort of off the bit. But through the out the whole bet, pretty well throughout the whole race, I could see how well Moulton Sunny was was travelling. So I never really thought I could catch him, but um, I did think she was gonna. She's a tough sort of filly, so I did think she'd find the line and maybe get the distance of the race a little bit better than the others, which she, she probably showed the last 100 metres. Um, notice on Monday at uh, Bankstown in the Trua, you're driving last tango in heaven for Seton Grimer. You're also on Arden's ace, the first emergency, uh, if it gets a run. Um, w- w- what will happen there? Will you drive last tango in heaven? Yeah, I think so. It's sort of hard to commit to a horse that you're not 100% sure is going to be in the race. So um, Stephen asked me to drive last tango in heaven and, yeah, it looks a you know a very strong race, but um, the draws are important on them tracks, and obviously it's drawn a the right gate to feature in the race and um, trialed quite well also last week, which um, gives me confidence as well. So, mate, what's the story with you? Are you working for your dad? Are you are you doing, or are you basically just doing all your freelance driving? Yeah, I used to work for Ricky Alchin, and um, that was really good. But I've recently. Uh, this year I've gone and worked for actually Leon Judd. Yep. He's just got a bit of a smaller team and um, obviously the driving really picked up last year and I was doing a lot of meetings and I wanted to keep that going. So just look to sort of go to a smaller stable, which, you know, suits me a little bit better and, um, yeah, do as much driving as I can. So everything's working out uh, really well at the moment. Well, mate, uh, another two winners on a Saturday night keeps your name up in lights. Congratulations with that and good luck going forward. Thanks, Greg. Thanks for having me on. Race one, the favourite was Captain's Knocker, $2.40. And as the starter said, go, no heartthrob went sideways and cannoned into Jillaby Nitro. And it lost a couple of lengths as a, a result. Not too many wanted to get forward here. So Hector led and Captain's Knock was able to slot into the 1-1 they settled down like this. Marker Pegs was Hector, Surface, Tuppence, Porter Prince, and Jillaby Nitro. Running line was I'm in trouble, Captain's Knock, Stravinsky, and Unfazed. 28 2, 28 6 for the first half. Hector and I'm in trouble were flat at the cages. 27 5 on the side. Stravinsky pulled three wide, which flushed out Captain's Knock. Tuppence pushed away from the pegs up the straight. Captain's Knock was never going to be beaten. Both place get as good. Total forgive run. Jillaby Nitro, his form is a lot better than it reads. Nowhere to go in the straight. 27.3 for a 151.6 mile. Race number two, the fave was My Ultimate Snowy at $3.40. A few wanted to get forward here. Sweet Coco, Freddie Singh and My Ultimate Snowy. Sweet Coco led on the pegs. Behind it, Amore in for day. Has the courage, speed dial and Sheffield Sparky. Running line was My Ultimate Snowy, Freddie Singh outside fighter. Vinky B, our treacherous rain. 26-2 and 28-9 the first half, and there wasn't a lot of action until the home turn. Sweet Coco looked to be in trouble at the cages, was gone on the turn. Freddie Singh came out of the 1-1, which allowed Amore in feeder to push off, and Has the Courage followed through. Now, Amore in feeder held its line, while Has the Courage and Rob Morris ducked back to the inside. Sheffield Sparky was looking for a run in the straight. 28 round the side, 28-4. Up the straight for a 151.5 mile. Great drive by Morris. Uh, Fred gave him a big wrap in the call, but he definitely keeps producing drives like that. Didn't mind the run of Sheffield Sparky. Sweet Coco dropped out. There must be an issue with it. Race number three. Fave was, he's a sure thing at $2, but there wasn't much between 
it and classy operator. Speed early from Ryan's gangster who led, but was pressured by he's a sure thing and classy operator. So they went into Indian file, classy operator, he's a sure thing, Ryan's gangster, Captain Blood, Terry Rama, Foxy Dada, Rockley Image, Dance and Deliver, Lose Dream and Wave the Bill. 48-7 lead time, then 31 seconds. Chris Geary got the running line going when he came out at the 8.50 with Foxy Data and out came Rockley Image, Dance and Deliver and Lose Dream. 29 won the second quarter. Classy Operator was travelling well in front. Foxy Data got to third easily and the rest seemed to be struggling. 27 won third quarter. Classy Operator went for home up the straight. He's a sure thing, couldn't reel in the leader. Finished second. Rockley Image charged home down the outside for third. Good run but got the right trip. First and second can win again soon. 28 home, 154.7 the mile. Nice performance, and Grimer gets another Saturday night winner. Race number four, Titian Raider was the $2.90 favourite. There was speed from Lockheel early before it gave way to Titian Raider, and they went into Indian file. So Titian Raider, Lockheel, Kaitoa, our ideal dream, Red Reactor, our Uncle Jim, Robbie Rocket. Lead time slow, 52, and then that forced our Uncle Jim to come away from the inside as they passed the finishing line with a lap to go. Our Uncle Jim and Robbie Rocket with a running line, 29.8 and then 28.1. Titian Raider tried to break their hearts when he dropped the 27.2 around the side, but Lockheel and Kaitoa were stalking it. Lockheel came to the outside in the straight and had one crack at the leader who was tiring, grabbed him late, 28.4 home for a 155 mile or 155.8 mile. Titian Raider, every chance, maybe if it had sat around the side instead of dashing, but he had got it made to order in front, so you can't be too critical. Kaitoa ran a good race for Christy O'Sullivan, nothing else worth a mention in that. Race number five, Swayze was the $1.05 favourite. There was speed early from Firefox and also Kanina Provlima. Firefox held, Robbie, uh, Robbie Morris made enough room to drop in with Kanina Provlima. Then it was LL Cool J, Malcolm's Rhythm, where you been bopping, Joe Nien and Star Major. Swayze kept trucking off the pegs and worked to the front after 400. 48-3 the lead time, and they stayed in single file until the home turn. So quarters, 29-2, 28-5, 27-9. Hart tightened the screws, and Swayze dashed away with a comfortable margin. On the turn, Malcolm's rhythm came off the inside, and so too did LL Cool J. Thought that those that did work early were left sitting ducks, as where you been bopping got to the outside and worked home really well. Malcolm's rhythm was really good late too. He keeps getting mentioned in this segment. I hope people had him in their multiples tonight. Um, He's going really, really well. Look for where you've been bopping to win a race when it can storm out and lead. Swayze's final quarter, 27-4 for a mile rate of 152.8 over the longer trip. Race number six, the fave was Artie's Express at 106. The speed came from Tay-Tay who crossed to lead before Artie's Express came forward and rolled to the top. And they went into single file. So Artie's Express, Tay-Tay, I'll have a Bubbles, Little Bliss and I'm Prezi Bell. There were no moves in this one at all. Quarters 27-5, 30.9, 28-5. And it became a dash up the straight. Artie's Express looked to be well in control until Tay-Tay zipped up the last little bit and just missed. I'm Prezi Bell looked a top three chance when she stuck to them inside. But I'll have a Bubbles was strong in third. 26-1 final quarter for a 153 mile. Lead is much, much better than that. And I think we will see her tighten up after that victory. Really like Tay-Tay. Great speed early and she finished off nicely as well. Race number seven, the three-year-old uh, New South Wales Trotters final. And the fave was My Ultimate Sunny at $2.80. Speed early from My Ultimate Sunny and also Maximus Meridius with Maximus crossing to lead. Economy galloped as the starter said go and then galloped again in the front straight. They went into Indian file. It was Maximus Meridius, My Ultimate Sunny, Malibu, Impact Stride, Prohibited Love, Centurion Dream, Karakajak Tooth, and Military Merit. 51 4, the lead time. Prohibited Love came off the inside with a lap to go. Centurion Dream and Karakajak Tooth came off as well. 31 4, 30.4, the first two quarters. The running line slid up and got up outside the leader. 28 9 around the side. My Ultimate Sunny had a lot of petrol, but it had to wait for. Prohibited love to drop off before it could come to the outside and sprint. When it got out, it flew. Karakajak Tooth loomed out wide but couldn't go with the winner. Good run from it. Military Merit had every chance but finished off okay in the straight. Uh, 29-7 final quarter for a mile rate of 2 minutes and 2 tenths. And race number 8, the fave was Royal Down at $1.18. There was speed to burn early here with Caligula and Royal Dan charging out of the gate. Powder Keg was playing up, missed the start. Caligula ended up crossing Royal Dan. Then on the pegs, it was Ravon Hall, Sunny G. It's Fergie time. Off the pegs was London to a brick. 
27-5 first quarter, then they backed it off to 30.6, 28-5 around the side, and London to a brick started to work into it. Royal Dan was holding his spot in the middle, Caligula back on the pegs. It was a great three-horse battle up the straight. London to a brick took all day, but got there in the shadows of the post to beat Caligula, who was brave. Royal Dan, who looked gone, rallied late between the, the two of them. 1.2 metres separated them at the end. 28.5 for a 154.7 mile. Good to see London to a brick trot throughout to win. Best win of the night, it's got to be Swayze. Just continued to turn the heat up on its rivals and proved too strong. He's back, baby, and ready to take on the best there is in the country. Uh, best beaten effort of the night, I'll go with Tay-Tay. Showed that early speed and came at Artie's Express late. She's going to win a nice race, I think, with those attributes in Sydney. She's growing on me, that's for sure. So best beaten effort of the night, we'll go with Tay-Tay. And driver of the night, Robbie Morris with has the courage, quick thinking to go back to the inside to find room. Horse has been racing well. Robbie produced a 10 out of 10. I must give Will Rickson a wrap on Lockheel 2. He outthought his rivals in that one. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Winning. Hey, that's pretty good. Winner. That was legitness. That I say, all right, all right, all right. Wow, winning. Bam. Just like that. That's all there is to it. That's all there is to it. Well, we didn't have a winner on the show last week. Uh, I missed out. Mr. T missed out. We're both at minus 20 for the for this season. Um, but I am leading the overall series 1-0. Mr. T's two. He's gone to Parks on Wednesday. Race seven, number one, Yaram and Kalu for Nathan Turnbull. It's only had the one run for the Turnbull stable. Made a meal of the start. If it can do everything right, then it should take some beating. So race seven, number one, Yaram and Kalu. Race 8, number 1, Artful Prince for Wade Judd and Justin Reynolds. One run back from a spell, finished second at Bathurst, beaten a long way. Mr T suggesting this might be a little bit more suitable and is the way to go in this 8th race at Park. So race 8, number 1, Artful Prince on Wednesday. My 2, Menangle Tuesday. Race 5, number 5, where's Harry? Look, he finished 5th last week and I tipped him, but he just got too far out of his ground. He hit the line really well, but couldn't reel in the leaders. I think he can bounce back into the winner's list in a much easier race. So that's race 5, number 5, where's Harry? And race 7, number 10, American Spirit, possesses good gate speed, um, has won 2 of its last 3, led from 10 last start and was beaten by Bartello, and Bartello has come out and franked that form by winning again since... If it can get a breather at some stage, I think it's going to take some catching. So that's race seven, number 10, American Spirit. Just about wraps up the podcast for another week. Thank you to my guests on the podcast today. Good to speak with Ash DeLoza and also Will Rickson. Hope you're enjoying your long weekend. Hope you've had a great week. I'll catch you again for the Sunday session again next Sunday. I'll speak to you then.